Hi there. One of my subscribers, Melody Brown, wanted to know more about neuropathy. And what more fitting topic for somebody who works in a pain research lab at the Yale School of Medicine. So I thought I would cover this topic in at least a little bit of detail um, here. And I might make some more videos about it later, uh, depending on how complex people would like me to get on the topic. The reason why is because um, neuropathy, or more generally, it's known as like peripheral neuropathy because it tends to happen out in the extremities, you know, the hands and feet, um, although it can happen all over the body. Uh, but there are many types of neuropathy and many, many different kinds of causes, and they can get really specific too, to the point that um, I'm not really sure how many there actually are. I know it's well over a hundred. So we're probably not going to talk about all those here, but we can talk about neuropathy in general, and maybe I can make a few more follow-up videos to talk about some of the more common, specific examples of neuropathy. So neuropathy is a bit of a generalized term, and basically it applies to any case where you have uh, damage or degradation or uh, obliteration of neurons in the peripheral nervous system. So you have your central nervous system, which is your brain and your spinal cord. You can think of your brain as like the center of everything, and it's like a supercomputer. You can think of your spinal cord as a sort of highway um, for information to flow, and then you have your body, which is your peripheral nervous system. And your body, your peripheral nervous system, is composed mainly of three different types of information that it is either receiving or sending off to the brain. So you can have information that is sensory, which goes from the body to the brain. We call these nerves afferent. They're an afferent pathway. Uh, and the motor information goes from the brain out to the body. And we call this efferent, right? And the way I remember this is uh, Offerant is to the brain, we're ascending, ah, ascending, offerant. And then the way we're going um, to the body, right, motor, is efferent, we're exiting, right? So, ah for ascend, e for exit, efferent, right? Um, and then also we have our autonomic nervous system, which is part of the peripheral nervous system, but this is stuff that's largely outside of our control. Um, main examples are heartbeat digestion, uh, breathing, although we do have some variable control of our breathing. It's also important to note that uh, the type of neuropathy that someone will experience does depend on the type of cells that are being affected. Sometimes you have what's called a mononeuropathy, which is when a specific neuro neuron, which is when a specific nerve is being afflicted, or a group of a very specific type of nerve. You can also have what is called multifocal neuropathy, which occurs when you have neurons in a group that are all being afflicted. And sometimes neuropathy can affect many different kinds of neurons and nerves all throughout your body, and we call this polyneuropathy. Um, so again, you know, your experience of neuropathy is going to be different depending on what the cause is, but um, the symptoms are quite variable. Some of the common ones get a little bit weird. Uh, the main one is just pain, right? And there are all kinds of experiences of pain that somebody can have. You could have uh, sort of an ache. You can have sharp shooting pains. Sometimes people experience numbness or an itching sensation. Sometimes people get this weird feeling like they're wearing a glove on their hand even though they're not, or they feel like they're wearing a sock on their foot even though they're not. Uh, you can also have throbbing or shaking or even weakness of the muscles. Although neuropathy affects people of all ages, we see neuropathy occur most often in the elderly. Besides age, there are other risk factors that can come into play here. Um, one really common, perhaps the most common example of this is diabetes and other metabolic sim syndromes. People with like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, 
um, tends to experience neuropathy more often. Uh, especially people who regularly consume alcohol. Uh, and that is largely related to um, nutrient deficiency. And another main cause of neuropathy is in people who engage in repetitive behaviors and actions. This often happens in the workforce. Um, say if you're on a worker's line and you're constantly shifting from one side to another, right? You'll start to get neuropathy in the area of your body where your nerves are starting to get compressed over and over and they kind of rub. Uh, and, and we would consider that a trauma-induced neuropathy. Uh, some pretty popular and basic statistics about neuropathy include uh, around 65% of people with diabetes experience some form of neuropathy. Uh, around 40% of people who are receiving chemotherapy or radiation for cancer treatment and 30% uh, of people with HIV also experience neuropathy. So um, how quickly does neuropathy develop, right? Once we, once we start the process, how rapidly will it get worse? Uh, and that also depends largely upon what's happening, right? Um, sometimes you, sometimes neuropathy will take a very long time to progress. It might start off small and gradually get worse over time. Um, one really common issue that is like this is lumbago, which is a compression of the nerves in the lumbar part of the spine. And so what happens is these nerves get compressed lightly and the muscles might, you know, get a little bit weaker. And as that happens, they're having trouble supporting the spinal column. And when they have trouble supporting the spinal column, the spinal column compresses the nerves just a little bit further. And this cycle sort of feeds into itself continually and over time will get much worse to the point where your spine will rely heavily on just your muscles for support. However, some peripheral neuropathies occur suddenly and they can get worse much more rapidly. And this will always depend on the condition that's causing it. Um, so like I just said about diabetes being one of or probably the most common cause of neuropathy at least in the United States, uh, the most common type of neuropathy with diabetes is called small fiber neuropathy. Uh, this type of neuropathy, the pain associated with it, is characterized by um, a tingling pain or a sensation in the hands and feet. Uh, most often it's described as sort of a burning. Some people kind of describe it as like feeling like a sunburn. Uh, and earlier I talked about sometimes trauma can cause neuropathy uh, due to compression from repetitive movements, but that is not the only kind of trauma. Sometimes people are in car accidents. Sometimes people hit their head. You might fall down. You might receive a fracture. It could be due to a sports injury. You could twist your leg or your arm. There are many different types of traumatic causes for neuropathy. Sometimes neuropathy can also be caused by genetic conditions or autoimmune disorders uh, or even infections. One such common syndrome is known as Guillain-Barré syndrome, in which the immune system actually attacks the nervous system. Uh, there are other immune disorders that are like this. Another common example is lupus. Um, rheumatoid arthritis is a lot like this, um, as well as other demyelinating neuropathies. Um, infections can also cause neuropathy, things like chickenpox, HIV, syphilis, Lyme disease, leprosy, West Nile virus, uh, and another really common one is hepatitis C. Uh, there are other health conditions that cause neuropathy as well. Um, they can stem from problems with the kidney and the liver. Hyperthyroidism is a really common one. Neuropathy can also be caused by tumors. Oftentimes, 
when a tumor grows, the cells of that tumor start to uh, press against and compress nerves and cause that compression trauma that we talked about already. Um, and also lymphoma, and there are many others, really. Um, and also, like I mentioned earlier, sometimes just medical treatments themselves can cause neuropathy. Uh, the main examples of this being radiation and chemotherapy for cancer. Another really common form of neuropathy stems from vascular disorders. Whenever blood flow is not getting to where it needs to go or it's not uh, getting there in a sufficient amount to deliver good enough oxygen, you'll see neurons start to die in that region. Um, this can also be caused by inflammation, blood clots, um, or vesiculitis. Earlier I talked about how neuropathy is also more common in people who engage in alcoholism uh, or alcoholic uh, drinking. This is often accompanied with a diet that leads to not receiving proper nutrition. And the really common thing with this is that the person's not receiving enough thymine. And so we often see with these people neuropathy within the hippocampus and what accompanies that are symptoms of inability to record new episodic memory. If it gets bad enough that person might even be diagnosed with Korsakoff syndrome which is the inability to form new memories. These people are sort of stuck back in time wherever they were last before the final transition happened and they couldn't record anything new. There are also a good number of inherited diseases or disorders that can cause neuropathy. Um, and sometimes neuropathy occurs and the cause is not directly known at all. It can just happen. Uh, I imagine a fair degree of it happens just with age. You know, just normal, everyday wear and tear, neural degradation. So, again, you know, let's talk about some of the common signs and symptoms of neuropathy. Um, the first, probably most common one, is a sort of pins and needles feeling, a tingling or sort of stabbing sensation all over the hands and feet. Um, sometimes people get burning or throbbing or even uh, sharp stabbing, sometimes electric pain. Uh, sometimes you might experience changes in sensation um, where something that is not normally painful becomes painful. I think we describe this as allodynia. Uh, or it, you can have the reverse of that too. No, what would normally be a painful stimulus is actually dulled or not painful at all. Uh, you, it doesn't just have to be a pain stimulus either. It could be any kind of sensory stimulus you might not be able to feel as well. Like I had said earlier, um, you might have the sensation of wearing a glove on your hand or wearing a sock on your foot. Um, other symptoms include falling or a loss of coordination. Sometimes when we have neural degradation in our cerebellum, you know, it throws us off balance. Uh, if we have it going on in our parietal lobe, it might cause us to feel like pain is happening somewhere in our body where it's not really occurring or we might just lose feeling in that part of the body. Um, muscle weakness, spasms, twitching, these are all common symptoms of neuropathy, um, including a loss of muscle control or even muscle tone. Uh, sometimes the loss of muscle tone or control is so severe we might even experience paralysis. If the neuropathy is occurring within our digestive tract, that might be associated with digestive problems. We might have problems with our bowels or our urinary tract. Uh, this can also lead to sexual dysfunction uh, and unintentional weight loss and a whole other myriad of issues all over the place. <clears throat> so that's like a brief overview of what neuropathy is. I hope you found that useful. Um, I might make a few more videos about specific conditions 
that cause neuropathy and how that neuropathy manifests with that specific condition. Um, but I think this is a good general overview and um, I hope you found it useful. Thanks for joining me.